Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to focus on the label element, label tags for forms. So I've got a basic form created here, and obviously there's some styles to it, but the HTML is relatively simple. I've got a set of form tags. My opening form tag has the method attribute and action attribute, not too critical for today's demo. I do have a field set. A field set is just what it sounds like. It's a set of fields. So all of these fields are related, so I've enclosed them in a set of field set tags. And I've put a legend for that, and that kind of describes the field set. It's a visual label, so to speak, even though it's not a label tag, so shipping information. And then I have some pretty standard things. I've got a number of text type inputs. These give me text boxes. And I do have a select menu with option. I only put one option in there, but it's the same technique whether it's one option or you know 50 options. And then of course I've got the text. The text that is next to the input element is of course the text that the user relies on to know what kind of information is supposed to go into the text box. So there's a basic form. Now there's a couple ways you can use labels. Both are both are good and it's my advice that you definitely use one of the two, okay? Labels I think are very very important for usability. They may not affect so much how the page looks, but really they make your form easier to use for people. So, here's how they can go about doing that. One way to use labels is to put an opening label tag in front of your label text, my label text being the word first name in this example, and then I would put a closing label tag at the end of the input. So in effect, I'm wrapping my label text and my input with a set of label tags. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do that for a couple of the others also. So I'll just do a copy, paste, 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 and paste. And oh, I made a mistake there. That should be a closing label tag. And then I'll do a closing label tag, copy, paste, 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 and let me get this other one over here, and I select, paste. There we go. So I've simply wrapped my label text and my inputs in a set of label tags. That little change right there, now when I go to my browser and refresh, no noticeable change, but watch this. I can now activate my input items by clicking on the label. I've just activated last name. And I can activate state by clicking on the state label. I've activated this. And then I could use arrow keys. So this is one way to increase the usability. Now this is especially useful on radio buttons and checkboxes. I didn't do any radio buttons or checkboxes in this demo, but the same value. If you do this technique, then it lets the user select a checkbox or a radio button by literally clicking on the label text. You've increased the surface area of what they can click on, which makes it a much easier form to use. So that is a technique for wrapping labels. Now there's another technique you can do also. My inputs don't have an ID, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and create a quick ID. ID equals F name, and I'll do this all down here. ID equals L name. And then in my opening label tags, I'm going to use a for attribute. For equals F name, for equals L name. Now, since I'm doing this technique, I no longer need the closing label tags. So now you can see both techniques. In one technique, you wrap the label text and the input in a set of label tags. In the other technique, you link the label and the input together with a for attribute in the label and an ID attribute in the input. So if I make this, if I save this, head back to my browser and refresh, I'm still able to activate first name and last name by clicking on the label text in the same way that I can activate address and city by clicking on the label text. So two techniques, neither is, you know, in a vacuum better than the other. So you might think, okay, well, what's the big difference? Why would I use one over the other? If you can accomplish your design by um, 
having the label text right next to the input, then wrapping the labels is perfectly fine. However, there could be some designs where your labels might be separated from your inputs. And in that situation, the for attribute is going to become much more critical. For instance, I'm not a big fan of it, but a lot of web developers might still use tables in order to organize the layout of their forms. So in that example, since my labels would be in one table cell and my inputs might be in another table cell, then using the for attribute and the id attribute would really be the only way to go. There could be other situations too for, um, for different kinds of designs that could be happening. So really two techniques, and it all depends on what your finished outcome is. I'm going to go ahead and pause my recorder for a second. I'm just going to throw some uh, labels and fours in, in these other elements here. Okay, I'm back, and I realized I had skipped something out here too. So what I've done here is I've taken um, and I've put four attributes in all of my opening label tags and I do have closing label tags surrounding the label so my labels are not surrounding the input so here's kind of another correct syntax my labels are independent of the inputs but they're linked together by the for attribute and the ID attribute so make sure you get those closing label tags right after the labels so now all of my labels are wrapped in label tags and they have four attributes so if I save this browser refresh there we go so one of the things I do like about this though is that now my labels are independent of the inputs I can go to something like my CSS and I could say create a rule my labels can all have a certain width now of uh, 200 pixels maybe and I can make that change refresh oops let's do this let's also make these labels block elements float them to the left and let's also have them clear the left I'll do a few things on there and refresh. Oh, then it's kind of wide, so I'll knock this back to like 160. There we go. So just by putting in that basic CSS, now I can kind of make a much neater looking form. And it was easier to do this by having my labels independent of my um, of my inputs. Okay, so there's a basic two techniques. Remember, wrap your label text and inputs with a set of label tags, or keep your label separate using four attributes in the label and ID attributes in the um, input itself. And there you go. Nice, neat form.